Hey, this is Eddie Ift from uh, Talking Shit with Jim and Eddie, and I just wanted to tell you about our sponsors, adamandeve.com. Uh, before we start the show, we always like to rev it up with a little bit of porn. And if you need some porn, you want the best porn there is, you want the best sex toys, anything like that, go to adamandeve.com. For a limited time only, you'll get 50% off just about any item. So when you select your one item at 50% off, you also get to receive three free DVDs plus a free extra gift. So check out adamandeve.com today for the special offer. Get 50% off one item when you type Jason for the offer code upon checkout. Jason, what's that that they type in? J A S. O N. And what is that? Jason. But what is it? It's 50% off. No, it's your name, Jason. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so you type in Jason's name, you get 50% off. Make sure you do this, support the show, and support Adam and Eve. So go to adamandeve.com or go to our website, Jim and Eddie Talk Shit. And now, stay tuned for our newest episode of Talking Shit with our guest, Jimmy Schubert. Two douchebags on a couch. One's a nestle, one's a grouch. Welcome to Talking <laughs> Shit. Shut up, Jason, you fuckface. Welcome to Talking Shit with Jim Jeffries and Eddie Ift. I'm Eddie Ift, and I'm sitting here with my co host, Jim Jeffries, and also fuckface Jason for interrupting me during that introduction. Yeah, I, you, you, do you ever wonder why the, some of the, the fans find you to be aggressive? I'm, I am aggressive. I wanted to punch everyone today. I wanted to fight everyone I could fucking find. I was looking for reasons to get you, to fight. Because you've, you've been in traffic. And then, yeah, and then I came home and I asked Jason to do one thing for the show today. One thing. What did I ask you to do? I don't remember. No, I asked you to... <laughs> obviously, you didn't remember because you didn't fucking do it. What, what was I supposed to do? What did I ask you to take before the show? Mushrooms. I couldn't get them. I didn't have right, any look, connection. I, like the guy just rolled into town. He's not you back don't, on You don't track. have to get on mushrooms. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's good yeah, on mushrooms. Have you heard him? Juice, juice, okay. Yeah, well, we've got a great guest today. We've got Jimmy Schubert, amazing comedian. Uh, we've got in the house, we've got everyone today. Machete's here. Lalit's here. Jesse's here. Uh, Jacob Suroff sticking around from the last episode. We've got PK here. And... Uh, uh, our guest is a, an old friend of mine, one of the funniest comedians working. He's been around forever. He's like 80. Um, he's like... We didn't have jokes. We had to jump in the audience and tickle people when I started. We had to set up some punchlines <laughs> like you kids have today. I'll tell you. What the... No, but uh, fuck. No mushrooms. I would have fucking done some mushrooms today. Oh, yeah. If they came in a box like Wheaties, my picture would be on the cover. I fucking love mushrooms. I'll, what I'll what like drug it. doesn't Jimmy Schubert like? Uh, I've done them all. You, I, I've you, never fucking... I've never shot up, but uh, you, you know, I've you, done pretty much everything else you know the thing with mushrooms they're not an everyday drug mm -mm. no so, some drugs are an everyday -er, and no. then there's mushrooms uh, there's special things like i always do mushrooms like when you're at a point in your life where you're going to the next level you need to sort some shit out they're great for like that kind of thing like i you, do it exactly. celebrationary when something good happens in my life yeah like yeah when i'm happy because i don't want to be in a sad state when mushrooms come around yeah you don't want to be underneath the end table chewing on a fucking revolver have a yeah, callus yeah. on the roof of your mouth from a loaded revolver <laughs> you got a bad trip he's got a bad trip oh fuck talk i'm gonna babysit a guy you don't have to babysit somebody on mushrooms it's gonna fuck up your whole high you know shit yeah. I could just hang around. He, he and Andy Dick together would be amazing. Because Andy went, ah, and he'd be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm telling something. <laughs> I have a thought. <laughs> I've, I've hung out with Jimmy at, like after shows, and he, uh, you go to a diner with him, and um, it's, uh, it gets a little out of control. Why? Uh, Jimmy, you have one of my favorite jokes of all time, though. I've got to say, it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite jokes. The one, the Siamese twins. Yeah, that's and not I, really a joke. That's like a fucking 10 minute bit, the conjoinal twins. And he does this bit. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna burn his routine. No, but it's, it, you, don't, you don't even do it anymore. It's so all. No, right. actually, no, I don't. I did it. No, I just stopped doing it because I get a, you know, I, I do a little it, thing called writing. I can fucking <laughs> let things go. Can't no. live on, I have a fucking live on a 45 minutes. I got 45 minutes and I'm going to write it for the next 20 fucking years. Awesome. People, I've always been amazed by the guys who do that, though. The guys who get like 40 minutes and then you had to write that. Yeah. Surely just, even by accident, haven't you written a joke by accident? <laughs> haven't, you, haven't you said yeah, something right. funny to your wife and she's gone, that's funny, and yeah. you've thought, I should say that again, 
in a more open arena of people. Than, yeah, yeah. Try it. You, yeah, yeah. I know. Try. Just try something. Just fucking a new opener, maybe. You know. Yeah, but your egg bit. You know, how much do people request? Oh, I want to hear the egg. No, no. Job. But there's a lot of things that I do that people re- re- request <laughs> but, because my routines are quite long. But I drop them after they're on DVDs. And I, Once they're on DVDs, I go on to to a new thing. Yeah, but you but got that but story's fucking hilarious. When I saw you do it, I was crying my eyes out. Oh yeah. Talking about. Well, yeah, have you ever seen the Siamese twin? The ones I've that, never seen one. No, I've seen them on the news. Well, they're called conjoinal twins, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Just so we're politically correct. I saw and that by on the way, conjoinaltwin.net, by the way. They don't even have the dot com site. I got news for you. For every conjoinal twin you piss off, that's two fucking letters you get. I, <laughs> I love when they show Siamese twins, and there's the one that's sort of controlling most of the body. And then there's the one that's just the head out of the chest. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's just that's just sort of bent. Uh, and then and then the, like Barbara Walters or something, ask them what they want to do when they grow up, and they have separate answers. Yeah, and I, you're like, really? Yeah. I want to be a pop star. I think I want to be a lawyer. Well, you better choose. And I'm thinking lawyer. Team ping yeah. pong. Well, I like I like that the fucking like you said the one's dominant and you're gonna drag the other one fucking in with you. I mean, could you imagine? Like, I got fucking six brothers. I could imagine having being connected to one. You know, you fucking share. You got a kidney, a spleen, and a liver. You fucking sharing this <laughs> two Irish guys, one liver. That's fucking not working out. <laughs> Cut them off me. I leave the liver. But, uh, oh, if I was a Siamese twin, I had someone attached to me, and they said you, you can bit detach, but the other one might die. I'd be like, yeah, look, I'm all for that, really. Yeah. No, but I read once that uh, that they can they can uh, one can live and one can die, and they stay together. Yeah, one snorts blow, and the other one gets paranoid. It's fucking <laughs> weird, man. It's fucking weird. It's fucking awesome. But there's always you always see those old things where they go, the oldest uh, Siamese twins ever were in Japan, and the thing, thing, thing. And then you always hear, like, when they show the old black and white photos, and they were married to these two guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when, when the relationship comes back in. Like, if yeah. there's two cocks and you're a girl, you wouldn't go, I'm just fucking my husband's cock. You would go from cock to cock. No, you got it. Yeah, well, you're pretty fucked anyway. You go, all right, what's, what the hell? Yeah, why put, not? Yeah, put them, fill me up. Three holes, no wait. Let's go. Let's yeah, get yeah, the party yeah, yeah. started. You're pretty much technically a freak anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so anything I you would do, make, people aren't going to be like, can you believe those Siamese twins I, fucked the same cock? <laughs> I, would, I would make my wife blow me but make a sister swallow. <laughs> I'd like to if, oh, there, that's, if that's it. I, if, there's, if there's anyone out there that knows, I know there's a couple in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, because every time I'm there, they always. I mean, it's like me. a fantasy trifecta. You got the fucking sisters, you got the fucking three way, and you, you got, got the, the midget. You know, you got the fucking head. Is that, is that the one? The midget one lives in. Is they the one in Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah. The girl wants to be a fucking country one, western. One's a country singer. western singer, and the other one's. The other Not. one wants to be normal. The other one's a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, the other one. Like, <laughs> she's just, and you just, just, like, just dragging her around. And you're right. She's a fucking she, midget. She's on a stick. She's just wheeling her around. And, going, come on, you guys, and one has blonde hair. The other has black hair. It's like, come on. It's terrible. It's the even couple. She's a pile of genetic debris, and show is she. <laughs> if there are any Siamese twins out there listening to us, conjoin twins, conjoin, conjoin twins, please. I, I look. Yeah. We will let you come to our house for free. If there, if there, <laughs> uh, it's it's no politically incorrect to say Siamese twins. So if there's any conjoined beaners, would be preferable for me. You know, yeah, to make it. You'd like them beaners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> conjoined darkies. If there's any conjoined, I won't any, say Siamese. Any I won't say Siamese. retard conjoined twins. If you're retards and you're conjoined, we'd like to have you here at our house to throw dodgeballs at your head. No, you're not going to get them to come now. Can you imagine playing dodgeball with Siamese twins? I've never played you hit dodgeball. You one and you go, you're out. In Australia, and we goes. don't. I've, I know of dodgeball through movie bullying. You yeah. know, in every movie, there's a bullying scene that involves a dodgeball, but I've never physically which, played it. Which is fucking gay. They eradicate dodgeball from school itineraries because some fucking pussy. My kid gets hit with the ball all the time. Well, fuck. You know, these fucking parents are fucking nuts. I mean, that's how you develop skills you'll need later in life. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dodging I mean, skills. Yeah, get, get good at it, you know? Watch this. Jason, did you play dodgeball as a kid? I love dodgeball. Did you get hit a lot? No, I, I was good at it. We yeah. might play dodgeball with you. Okay. Yeah, is the ball very soft or is it like a no, volleyball? It's like a rubber, rubber ball. ball. It's soft. It's it just not bounces hard. Off your Only face. a really good headshot. I mean, it like may, you, it may leave. Mm. A, it may be, It's like get, it's the equivalent of getting like a, a light slap. Is what the, what the I, I think the we should play uh, uh, the podcast dodgeball. 
Yeah, well, if we need teams, but I'll play. We got I'll enough. Play dodgeball. We got enough to play. You can play at the senior center right up here. They got a gym. I, I, <laughs> oh, that's how we let us in. How do you actually, know that the senior center has a gym? Why? Then, what are you I, hanging out in the senior center for? I know actually, the building manager for all the municipal buildings. Of course you do. That's what you do. You guys do. should arrange. A uh, pickup game with the seniors. Dodgeball with the seniors. <laughs> I'll play them. Come on. <laughs> I just, there's, I not, there's nothing like wailing on a woman with a routine. Zimmer frame. Because <laughs> we want to give back just to the, the community. She's on a walker. I, I would love to take out a fake leg. Just throw it so hard and just see some guy just fucking fall over with his fake. Yeah, yeah, so some, some war veteran. That's it. That's Way to go, I was think, This is a bit off because we're talking about fake, fake legs. When Paul McCartney was married to Heather Mills and he went divorced, so she tried to act like Paul McCartney was a cunt, right? And she went to court and one of her things was, that he wouldn't let her use the bedpan in the bed and he made a hop to the bathroom in the I'd middle of the night. I'd make her hop too. Too fucking right. I would fucking, I'd, I'd put a little fucking. It's Paul McCartney. It's like the I'd, bathroom's downstairs. I'd put a little zip line from the bed to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, honey, you guys. Yeah, Alex, bedpan put in for you so you don't. Okay, listen. You can hop to the fucking bed. Yeah, you fucking hop peeing to the, in the bed shit, with the me. Next, She's sitting there laying the next, next to you, launching a sewer pickle in a tin pan, and you're trying to get some the, sleep. The next year, she was on Dancing with the Stars. If you can go on Dancing with the Stars, you can hop to the fucking shitter. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, you can learn how to piss. I saw a girl in Atlanta. You know the girl. But he reckons he, he, she reckons that he used to hide the leg. Really? That was she said that? And that makes me like Paul McCartney so much more. <laughs> Cause, cause not, not only did he write Blackbird and Yesterday and fucking Helter Skelter, the guy did rock it out, but he also had good sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. that's hilarious. I saw a girl in Atlanta that could pee standing up and she didn't have a cock. She would lift her fucking, like, the hood over her clit up and, like, stretch it up and just stand there. She lifted her dress up, didn't have underwear on, just stood in a parking lot and pissed like a dude. You know the... Group, you hung out with them in Atlanta. Yeah, I don't know why she wanted to show you that. <laughs> but it was fucking awesome. They, you know, they do have a device for women that actually straps on. It's like, and it's got a little funnel with a, with a thing. Well, and the, you can get the, that uh, at adamandeve.com. Thank you. At the, at the <laughs> what, what's it called? What's that device at the, called? <laughs> at the music venue, the music, like the outdoor festivals in Britain, they, they started having it because none of the women wanted to go into port and they have these troughs everywhere. They're like It's like a cardboard cone. That you put, it's like a funnel. It's like a beer it's bong. It's like a funnel that you put at the end they of the They shove end. a beer bong, the funnel, up to their cunt, and they just piss in it and it goes down the tube, which they should have because the fucking, to sit down. And Female fucking, urination is disgusting. It though. is, absolutely. I, it you, sprays all over the place. And we always block for just, you while you're doing just, it in the it weeds. It just looks so, and it makes a... <laughs> <laughs> Like, like it's it's just splatters like, all over your like feet. A male piss is so dainty and effeminate. Lily, L- 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 defend, yeah. defend your race. Well, you know, well, you know what's gender, no. Wait, look, gender, whatever, race. She, she, uh, defend the Armenians. She can't. She can't hear us again. Um, yeah, she can't hear us. So we, no, I, I, Jimmy, I Jimmy, she doesn't have headphones on, so it. we can talk about her right now without her. Sure her. Again. I think I urinate. We talk about how fucking sloppy you know, All right, I don't urinate on Jason's. She's not even coming through there at all. She has no idea what we're saying. Are you working? Get the microphone over there. Jason stuck his big fat fucking tongue down that. Jason, is that the hottest girl you've ever kissed? Lalit, is Lalit the hottest girl you've ever kissed? I don't, th- I don't think so. It ha- that has to be the hottest girl who, you've ever who kissed. Who was hotter? You stop racking your brain. There's yeah. been four. Yeah. No, I mean, I've kissed five other people, you know. People? That how many, how many people girls. have you kissed? Hey, and you need a place to stay. Come Andy, on. Andy, Andy, Dick, Andy Dick was here last week. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I did not. He wasn't into me at all. And I, I'm not I'm happy about that. Yeah. He was into PK. He was into you guys. He didn't yeah. even, he crossed yeah. his legs away. Yeah, he's he seen yeah, more he, dick ends than weekends that way. <laughs> he, likes, he likes to be on the So what was the hottest, hottest girl you ever kissed? Uh, the hottest girl that kissed me was uh, uh, an Italian girl. And it was after a, a wrestling match. <laughs> it's kind of like one of those dynamic cool moments did you did you wrestle did you, her into the bushes no no <laughs> <laughs> jimmy has there been a moment yet where you're wondering who the fuck is this guy and why is he here no no i you showed me the video at the improv a couple weeks ago about him and the first time he got all hopped up on the booger sugar and, oh and shit. somebody just somebody just sucker punched him and, I said, and you were screaming yeah you're just fucking hysterical oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's, you know, get a homeless guy all coked up and just start sucker punching him. That's like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like going down a fucking old, it's like going down the old age home and playing, you know, like a pickup game, or like dodgeball. Just a fucking, you know, 
beat them, beat them up. A we're good bit. people here because no. we get back here and uh, we're going for a, we're going for a Pulitzer Prize with this fucking show. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't remember punching him in my defense. <laughs> I, I woke up the next I don't day. Even, oh, you know what's <laughs> funny? Because you were like lining up one, two, <laughs> I, I, I crack. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good punch. I, I don't remember. Nice. I don't remember Green do it though. I don't know it how wasn't, we got into it that wasn't, scenario. He didn't look like he agreed to it. He was just kind of challenging them. Out. You're like, you can't hit me hard enough. When I was when I was 19, I was told to wrestle a bear. <laughs> he told us. Yeah, I got a lot of shit for that night. What for from telling people like you're really? a dickhead? Uh, yeah. You're a dickhead. Uh, uh, how high are you today? I'm a little high. Well, just a little. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you only had a dollar on you yesterday. How are you high? He's sucking cock, <laughs> sucking cock for drug money, bro. He's on the business end of a glory hole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Looking for a little payout. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he's going to be on the other end of a glory hole. <laughs> they, say, they say that uh, in, in Russell Brand's biography, he used to do that when he was on the heroin. Really? Yeah. Glory yeah. holes? No, he used to be, uh, by, oh. by day, he used to be uh, an MTV presenter. Right. And then at night, when the money <laughs> suck cock for money, yeah. as a little hustler, Fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was a, he was a proper smack addict back in the day, and now he's Arthur. Yeah, that's well, what him in a crime against you know, lock up the director. And just, I haven't yeah, seen the movie. How, re- how do you remake Why? Arthur? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Crime against cinema. Yep. Did, has anyone seen it? No, no. I I actually, I will not nobody's seen movie. it. Yeah. Not anybody. No. Wait, Hello. wait, wait. Jimmy, standing Jimmy, offer for $10,000 to anybody Jimmy, who actually been, went to that movie. You, you've been in a lot of movies, right? A couple, yeah. Yeah, if you were asked to be an Arthur, would you have been in it? I probably would have wrapped my lips around the cock of corporate greed. Yeah, I would have, <laughs> would have started sucking. What, sure. what, what movies have you been in? Films. What's that? You know, uh, Go, uh, Little Thing, Coyote Ugly, Italian Job, uh, One Hour Photo, and just a couple little. Cool. Just, just yeah. a couple. Just a couple little. Were, yeah. you, were you in Sopranos? I was not in Sopranos. I was just, just thought, the hat. I the hat. I just got the hat. <laughs> it matched the outfit. Black you do a lot of TV, though, right? So, yeah, some stuff, yeah. What else? What TV shows? Uh, King of Queens, a couple episodes, with 10, 10, 15 episodes of that. Uh, ER, once and again. What'd you do in ER? I played a security guard. Uh, I was supposed to guard a crack addict who escapes, and then I get yelled at by Juliet Margulies. The good wife. <laughs> you played a crack addict? No, no, I played the security guard. Oh, I the guard the crack and the gangbanger. <laughs> you know, and I, I got away on my show. I didn't know. You know what I mean? You know, uh, I just did a. I just did a thing on a Disney show. Apparently, <laughs> they did, apparently they didn't see my act. I played Bobby Dicey, world's greatest daredevil. It was like an evil Knievel thing, but they dressed me up in this Elvis <laughs> jumpsuit, Zeke and Luther. Last week I went to an audition and I walk in. I don't know. Uh, on the way there, I call a friend. And they go, "You know, you're going to the born again Christian casting agent." I go, "What are you talking about?" I go over to this audition. Every movie they make or all they made that the they cast the 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 whatever of Christ. What's that? The body of Christ. Christ Passion of the Christ. They did all these movies, and they in the in the fucking waiting room. They're all talking about the message, and if the movie has the message, and I'm sitting there like reading my script, going. Hope they don't figure out like what I do. Well, and, you know, it's so funny because that, that Scientology is like that too. Come on down for a casting lesson at the <laughs> Scientology, and they, you know, next thing you know, it's just you know, not a lot of people know it, but I'm a methadone actor. I like to go in and fucking. It's <laughs> <laughs> my motivation. <laughs> um, no, but you uh, you can't see that, but he just wrapped the cord around you, his arm. To, didn't you go mental in an audition today? Yeah, I told I told the casting director to uh, hurry the fuck up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to be working anymore. Uh, well, I, no, no. You should do shit like that. These people are so fucking full of shit. I, you know, I was sitting there with these three people, and uh, they were sitting there, and it was this horrible fucking script about a guy, about a bunch of actors, and they get cigars, and they smuggle them back and surfboards, and they get the budget for the movie. It's like a movie. Well, this is the... This could be the dumbest fucking thing I've ever fucking read in my life. And I sit down, and it's these three douchebags. And the one day, one guy yellow glasses on. It's this whole freaking Hollywood thing. And I'm looking at them. I'm going, how full of shit are these people? And I said, you know, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know how show business works. You read for the gay guy. If the gay guy likes you, he takes you to the lesbian. And the lesbian likes you to take you to the Jew. And if the Jew likes you, you're in. And that's the way it works. And I swear to God, they, they looked at me like that's a fucking retarded. That was a brilliant. And I said, can I go now? I want to fucking sit there and be like, you know, it's fucking stupid. That, that is actually like so, scientifically correct. Yeah, yeah, he just nailed it on the, on the said, I've, I've never had it said so succinctly. <laughs> 
Holy shit. I've never got past a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Jim's <laughs> And I think I give in too easy to the gay guy. And I would have, you know, I, yeah, you know, and I would have done it except they were such fucking phony fucks. I hate it. I, I mean, it's like you know, I, I, no, no. What they, if this is a commercial for Seven Eleven to be the spokesperson for Seven Eleven, and they're in there doing like nine and ten takes, and I'm like, read the fucking script. I'm losing my mind. You know what I like about it because you look like every Seven Eleven staff member. <laughs> <laughs> They were going against type. <laughs> Eddie's a well... <laughs> yeah, and like I go... Yeah, so a healthy-looking so, white so guy. I'm, I'm listening with my ear to the door. I'm listening, and I hear them going, doing another take, and try it this way. Try it this way. We're not making the next Godfather. We're making a fucking 7-Eleven film. Say the fucking... Read the fucking line. Hire a celebrity and fucking get the fuck out yeah. of it. Like, dude. So the guy walks out, and he goes, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, take a little break. I, no, no, no. you got to hurry the fuck up. We've been waiting here an hour. Hurry, and everybody looked at me like, "Did you did you just talk back to a casting yeah, because director?" You're, yeah, yeah, because you're a comedian. You don't have to. You don't have to play the fucking game. Well, I think I was getting cocky because I was in the lobby and I was talking about working in Australia and all this stuff. And all these actors are like, "You get paid to do stuff," and I'm like, <laughs> yep. "Yeah." And I was I, it, we got to talk about flying in first class, and some kid goes, "You've flown first class," and I'm like. Yeah, I, I'm not just an actor. I'm not fucking living in a shoebox trying to... Like, I do my, my comedy shit where we get paid. And so then I, I started feeling, like, horrible about being at this audition. So I just wanted to burn the bridge. So I went, can we get, get this fucking thing going? Let's get the fuck... I, I got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's some, sometimes it's like a waste of time. It's like you're sitting there and there's a bunch of guys that are, like, kind of, like, 5'2 and very kind of slight in nature and they're looking for that kind of guy to play the security guard at the community center you know and then a guy like me comes in with my voice and I goes hey what was this about how the fuck did I get in here I'm against that you know it's like you know, you know you're not getting it they're looking for I, the guy I hate when you walk in and they've got two characters like one's Todd and one's Barry and Todd's <laughs> good looking and Barry's ugly and the, lady, <laughs> and, and the lady looks at you and goes you're reading for Barry <laughs> <laughs> and you go off and you sit at the side with all the ugly people like, <laughs> right, right, all the good looking toms are in the corner fucking preening themselves <laughs> I like how they give you a description of the character before you go in I had, I had no lie twice in one day I had two auditions they both the character description was he's a loser but doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is most characters. You know, I, my, you know it's so funny. There was a point you, you were going to audition, and you opened my trunk of my car. It looks like Beretta's trunk with all the disguises and the mustaches. And you do that whatever. shit? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I'm not one of those actors. You know, you open a trunk, it looks like a fucking, it looks like a, you know, I just, I just wigs do, and hats and shit. I just auditioned for a movie, and I haven't heard back from it, but I auditioned for a movie called Jutopia. <laughs> right, I'm not making this up. There's a movie being made called Jutopia, and there was a lot of blonde girls who rocked in with Anne Frank wigs, like actually like went for the dark wigs so that they could really? they could do up for the part. Wow, <laughs> that nice. story. Killed. I met Tom I, I once. hate when I hate when guys are too into it. They come in in the whole outfit and everything. Oh, well, dude, you gotta eat. listen. If you want to work, you gotta go in. I tell you, tell you what, can't do the it. guy I went, I auditioned for Mo in the Three Stooges, and I just saw the the. <laughs> <laughs> And I just, say that again. Say that again. I, I want someone to know this is a ringtone. I, Jim Jeffries, auditioned for Mo and the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. And uh, the guy before me, I was looking at him like, you fucking douchebag. Jimmy's he was laughing, dressed, but he's in it. He was dressed like Mo. He had the wig. He had the whole fucking thing. Anyway, I just see the publicity photo for the new movie. That cunt got the part. Did he really? Yeah, yeah, the guy before me that was going, who's this douchebag all dressed up as Mo? Oh. It, wow, that's here's interesting. The, here's, see, he, what he, see what you're saying? He see, also played was... Robin Williams in, um, they did an NBC like sort of biopic movie about Robin Williams being becoming Mork and Mindy. So this guy's obviously a good impersonator, but I, I've noticed him from any other comedy circles. There's a comedian named Buddy Bolton. Do you know Buddy? I know Buddy, yeah. Buddy Bolton booked a part in an Adam Sil Sandler film. I think it was Mr. Deeds. I'm not sure where he played Abraham Lincoln. Right. And... Uh, he beat out a guy for the part. It was like his first part in a movie. He beat out a guy who played Abraham Lincoln 52 times in films. Wow. No, it's not 52. It's four score let, and no, seven. But no, can let, you imagine no, let me tell you, let me how tell you bad something. that guy the wants guy, to kill Buddy Bolton? <laughs> I got news for you, bro. The guy, the guy looks so much like uh, Abraham Lincoln 
Some dude walk up behind him, said, sick Tepper Triana, and he shot him in the back of the head. That's how good he was. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, what was the security like there? How did he get that close to Lincoln? Like, it wasn't no, because Lincoln changed the seats. Did he? Yeah, he changed the seats. And security, uh, you know, the, the security. Oh, really? Is that yeah, true? Yeah, story? yeah. And uh, he tried to give the tickets away, but no one would take them. He goes, I don't want to go see this fucking shitty fucking play. He goes, no, Mr. President. No, did, he, did he really change his seats? Yeah, I think he did. Because I'm going to say that in front of someone like it's fact now. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard this. <laughs> What do you tell that's Jason? So that's how you live your life. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. You just you just gave Jay, you just gave Jason four hours at a party. Uh, that, no, that that's that's funny, but that's uh, that is true. That's yeah. what I heard. I was watching. This is how no, lies I, I, get made. Yeah. No, no, I was watching. I was watching because he was in a booth. I was yeah. watching. Uh, he was a John Wilkes booth. Good night. No, he. Uh, I was watching the Pawn Stars last night, and they had the wanted poster for. Uh, John Wilkes Booth, John which is Booth. like an original piece of uh, history. And they said, well, that's what they said. What, where was security? Does he said, they said he changed his seats. They hadn't had an actual story. Also, I, okay, this is the deal, right? Now, Obama has, I think it's, he has a Bentley that has like fucking this like sapphire glass that's yeah. two inch thick. And there's his blood is in little bags refrigerated in the door. Like, this is the thing. That's ridiculous. Right? No, inside his car, there's guns that pop out of the fucking thing. They did this big thing on the motor show and they showed it how it was kitted out. But it, bags of his blood are in each door, like, on, on ice. Now, fucking Lincoln, just, not Lincoln, fucking Kennedy, just rock, rocking around in a convertible. But that's when it all started. Yeah, that's... No, because 50 years, 100 years before that, fucking Abraham Lincoln was shot. My mother did that, but the world was such an innocent that, place back then. We never expected it. JFK any. was a setup, though. That was like against every protocol. Uh, no, here no, we, that, here we go, that, here we go, here no. we go, here we go, here we go. Him, him, sitting, him sitting in that car like that was actually against the advisement of his security. That's they were the, like, don't do this. That is the coolest convertible ever. Yeah, that's the only convertible ever been made that has four doors. So there you go. Oh, the JFK's? Yeah, yeah it's the same yeah. way they have an entourage where the uh, doors yeah, open uh, outwards. Yeah, yeah. And when the roof comes down, it goes back and to the left. The convertible. Oh, really? Yeah, when it goes back <laughs> and to the left, oh, the convertible. Oh, come on, shut that. it. <laughs> All right, Jesus. <geez. laughs> really? That, no, it's so funny. But if you go through Daly Plaza, you realize how small it is. I mean, it's. I've never been there. They, ha they have it. I was they, there once in '62. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, they have it. They have a cross there in the street, where at the exact point where he's shot, and they reckon they lose about two or three people a year standing on there because it's a busy bit of road. That's hilarious. People yeah. want to get the photo quickly, quickly, and he's around a turn. It goes under a <laughs> tunnel all of a sudden. Yeah. Jason, tell us your theory on the Kennedy assassination. Was there was there someone on the grassy knoll? Were you the grassy knoll? It was a magic bullet. You really yeah. think it was a magic bullet? No. Well, if you no, what do you what do you honestly think? What do you honestly think happened? I really think that he stood up to the uh, military industrial complex and they snuffed him for it. I got news for you. It wasn't the military industrial complex. It was the mob. And if you read a book called Paddywhack, the Rise and Fall of the Irish American Gangster in America, <laughs> and they talk about uh, you Jack know, Ruby and all that. Well, they talk about the the the, the Italians and all the port cities, but in in, in New Orleans this direct connection to Sicily. They did not need Chicago's approval. They did not need New York's approval. They operated on their own. And those were the guys who said they got the hit. They didn't need it. And that's New Orleans is right down there. And they said we should have, they said we should have cut off, they should have, should have killed but let Giovanni, as is, say, we said John, they should have let John go and they should have killed Bobby, which they, you know, Sirhan Sirhan did. But I mean, yeah. they should have killed Bobby. There would be no need to kill. That would have sent a message to JFK and we he would have, he, he would have gotten in line. But, you know. what, what was the name of the guy again who did it? What was his name? Jack Ruby? Jack, no, Not Jack oh, Ruby. Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald. Yeah. So Lee Harvey Oswald, I watched a documentary on him. It's pretty damning, some of the evidence on the cunt, though. Yeah. He, he came in with a box that he reckoned had fucking curtain rods in it. And he, he, he hung out in Russia a lot as well, and he digged that place. And, and there's also and that, that something to go, key. when you said we were talking about Abraham Lincoln and Kennedy, you know, they have a lot. Both of their killers had three names, John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald. Sec uh, Lincoln, uh, a secretary named Kennedy. Kennedy had a secretary named Lincoln. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Um, what was the? Yeah, there's, there's like about twelve of them. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, can you find this? Uh, John F. Kennedy got shot in a Lincoln. <clears throat> and, uh, in a Lincoln, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He lived in a Lincoln log house. Yeah, but, and, and, and Lincoln got shot got, in a Ford, though. And what's that? Lincoln got shot in a Ford. He got shot in the fucking theater. What's the name <laughs> of the theater? 
Four Theater. Four Theater. Uh, right. I think that's shot. Uh, that's right. Uh, and and, and JFK once <laughs> told. <laughs> I just did a zinger. Bear me. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Abraham Lincoln grew up in a log cabin. JFK once built a log cabin. Log cabin syrup in his dad's I, I I just, Jason Hour used to build log cabins. I, I built one log cabin. I just watched that America: The History of Us because they got it on Netflix now to watch, and I watched it all the way through again. And I think it's a fucking great documentary. But they literally do do this. They go, the T-Model Ford, Lincoln and built a log cabin and he was in Omaha or something and he was a pioneer and he did the thing. And they go through all these things. They can talk forever about some fire that happened in New York and then they'll do this, slavery. And then they just carry on. Like they mentioned slavery for 20 minutes in a 14-hour it documentary. It never happened. Well, I got news for you. You know what the thing is? I mean, if you read, I, I was talking about the rise and fall of the uh, Irish American. You read that book, the Irish got here, came over here on coffin ships because of the uh, potato infestus, which was basically engineered by the English. I mean, yep. it was the only cash crop they were allowed to grow. These people were a million and a half Irish, died in the streets, jumped on coffin ships to come here. They had here 40 years before everybody else. Mm. Then, you know, then... The Germans came, and they, you know, and and they kind of entrenched the Irish, kind of entrenched themselves. But it, that so many of them died. It's amazing. I know. The, it's Irish, just, I, I the really, old potato holocaust. You know. Yeah. Well, no, actually, actually, the no, thing with the, the potato, potato famine is if you if you learn about it, it always sounds like they were just picky eaters. But if you actually learn about it. <laughs> But the thing you also with the about, potato famine, yeah. God forbid they drop a fuck. They were surrounded by water. God forbid you drop a line in the water and catch a fish. No, no, the British fleet. The fucking alcohol. No, the British, the British fleet were sinking fishing boats that were trying to fish. Okay. They, so. the, no, the British enforced that yeah, you, famine you by not fish, letting them you can, fish. You can fish just from the pier, though. No, they yeah. would... They would they well, curb. They were in. Anyway, Paul Provenza does a joke. Guys. Paul Provenza does a joke. He actually asked an Irish audience that. He said, uh, why don't you just go fishing? And they go, ah, oh, you can't enjoy a fish without a chip. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious but uh yeah but everybody every ethnic group that came to this country had a fucking horrible yep. i mean everybody had a horrible and nobody had it worse than the fucking american indian the i don't want to tell the i don't want to tell you the swedes that are here <laughs> meet some swedish girls they'll tell oh, you about they, yeah. all the pasty How american guys they've had to fuck the plight is <laughs> terrible the, the plight of the australian backpacker isn't as documented <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't documented as much as you think. Like, we don't understand some of the references. We can't get a good meat pie anywhere. It's fucking, it's hard. How bad, how bad has it been for the Armenians, Lily? Oh, here we go. Um, Have you had some, you've had some genocides, yeah, I mean. Yeah, we did. In evidently not that successful, but yeah. carry on. And they, they obviously, <laughs> they, all, they obviously killed all you. Outlaw land. <laughs> you, know, they, you guys have all the jailers and shit. But, 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 there was a rejects of Britain. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 America's <laughs> also the rejects of Britain. Everyone's yeah, the rejects right. of the Britain. Yeah. But, they didn't have but, the space. But the, Armenian... the British are so smart, they sent these criminals off to lovely beaches with the opera house and the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were there yet. Yes, the joke. Oh, okay, the joke. Um, <laughs> Lilith, though, yeah. but, but when they when they had the genocides against you, they must have killed all your famous people. Uh, yeah, except for the Kardashians, because they, well, they, yeah. they thought this woman's not smart <laughs> enough to get famous. <laughs> They, they beheaded a lot of the intellectuals and the scientists, and they raped the women and killed them. And they the raped kids. the women and killed them. Yeah, was it just enough to? Just and they, rape and them? they, you know, deported them into the desert. Yeah, we went was through it, a lot was, for I hundreds have, of years. I it wasn't just a, like I the this, early 19th. So it's kind of what Jason's done to you. <laughs> it, it wasn't just enough to gut her ass like a housing and nerve development no, project. He still hasn't gone kill her. I have to give a shout out to a movie that I used to. My parents used to make me watch as a child over and over again because I enjoy it. They used to sit me in front of the thing. And I showed this movie to Elite the other day. Has anyone else seen Yellowbeard? Oh my god, no. that's hilarious. <laughs> you have to see Yellowbeard. Oh, yeah. It's about two dollars at the moment on iTunes to fucking download. It's it's a movie made by um, uh, Mark Chapman from you know Monty Python, Graham Chapman from right. Monty Python fame. It's got Cheech and Chong in it. And it's rated PG. I don't know how it's rated PG, but it has more rape jokes in it than any <laughs> film I have ever seen. And What's I want yellow beard. And it, like yellow nobody's beard. Yeah. so like his wife comes and visits him in prison after twenty years. He goes, "Oh, not you again." He's a pirate. And she goes, "She goes, I just want to." And she goes, "I haven't been here for twenty years." He goes, "What do you fucking want?" And then she goes, uh, "Do you remember when we uh, had sex twenty years ago? What when I was raping you?" Right? <laughs> And then she goes, we had a bit of a kiss and cuddle. And he goes, I'm sure I killed the last person I raped. 
And she goes, the after cuddling was a bit violent. Right now, I used to watch this film all the time as a kid and I would like everyone to see it. And I only remember that just now because Lalit said that her people were raped, which I don't understand because for Armenians, let's be fair, your face does work as contraception. Oh. <laughs> You're never going to get laid with that. You know, I, I actually, I went to uh, Afghanistan to entertain the troops. And I, I almost caused an international incident. I suggested that they move the ice slot and the burqa down over the mouth for an opening because you don't, you just, come here. You know, just who gives a shit with your eyebrow? Look, get over here. Just, I need an opening where your lips are. Come Did here. you do Come that joke over there? No, I didn't do it over there because, uh, you know, they were walking with people. Yeah, they, yeah. They were in the they, But I don't like that you. because I like it when they look up at you when they do that. Otherwise, it might as well be Jason's mouth. <laughs> I like yeah. the old joke that everyone's done now where they go, uh, you know, like uh, go over there and yell, show us your face. <laughs> like in uh, New Orleans, show us your tits. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. we were over there way early into like 9-11 shit. We were... We did Dubai, and I just did the comedy club over there. You've done it. Yeah, I'm, the, this is a club not, with the two hostage minimum. Is I'm, that a, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not allowed back. I'm not allowed back at that. I'm not club. allowed either. Yeah, Remember they, the they the hate guy, me. The guy hates three comedians in this world. Jim and I are two of them. Uh, he wow. put me in a headlock and like punched me in the head and threw me on the ground. He's a fucking cocksucker. He is, that he's an oh, asshole. He runs. What, he runs th there's a is he an Arab guy? No, no, no. He's a, he's a he's a, he's a scouse from Liverpool. Yeah. And he was and he's apparently a fat fucking cunt. He's a and he's a yeah. fucking cunt. He's a cunt. And apparently he was brought over because he was like the drug dealer in Liverpool. So they brought him over to Dubai. He didn't to, pay me. He didn't pay me. Run the drugs to, to he Dubai. Didn't pay you. When I got back, he wouldn't pay me. And I, all because I upset. I upset. Um, one of the fucking sponsors were Heineken, right? And the fucking head of Heineken's wife was a drunk fucking slag who was yelling out shit through the whole fucking gig. And I used a put down that I've used occasionally. I said, you, you seem like a very nice woman. I, I would, but I could never fuck you. I could only ever make love to you than come on your face, which unfortunately would take most of the fake tan off, right? So it was just, it was an aggressive comment. Right, I'm I, not gonna. Well, what do you expect to happen? I mean, that's why that's the thing. But I get... she, she, that was my final after. Shut up, shut up. You did put down, put down, put down, put down, put down. And then she said, "You'll have to apologize to me, or you're never working in Dubai again." And she was fucking right. She was fucking right. She called it. <laughs> you got to give credit where credit's due. So when I got there, the guy could not stop talking about how much he hated Jim Jeffries until you went on. Yeah, and then yeah. he put me in a headlock, punched me in the head, threw me on the ground. And then wanted Why? me to. What did, what did wanted, you say? I forget, I called him fat or something. But he uh, he wanted me to go on stage, and uh, he goes, "Go on." I'm like, "I'm not fucking performing after you just punched me in the fucking head." And he's like, "You have to go on." I go, "Fuck off! I'm not going." And so I wouldn't do the show. And everybody's like, "Come on, come on, man! We want to see a show." And this just shows you how pathetic a comedian is. I was like, or me. I'm like. Well, the crowd wants to see me. <laughs> so That's I did hilarious. The, so I did the show and and ended up bombing. <laughs> well, because you, you, you know, I'll that, say it here that expats, and if you're listening to it right now, expats who live in Dubai, you're a bunch of cunts as well. Except, I've been there four times. Anyone who lives, any any white guy who lives in fucking there and goes, I don't pay many taxes, I'll never go back to Britain or whatever. You're a enjoy, fucking... Enjoy your desert and when the oil yeah, runs out, a, have fun a, and get a sprinkler you're system. You're a cocksucker. Yeah, yeah, you're I working out there as a fucking tennis pro or something. You're yeah. running away from your problems, you I, I cocksucker. Got, I think I have news for you. I could never fucking go to Dubai. It's fucking a milky white, bro. The only way I stand to get a tan is if I get it's a melanoma so, and it all grows it's together. It's so fucking hot out there. I mean, it's 110 degrees at 1130 at fucking night. People go, and the air conditioning is outrageously cold as well. They have no middle ground. No, it sucks. <laughs> and and the people there are all there for one reason. They're greedy fucks that just want to make a lot of money that they think they're... It's like, what are you going to do with it? You live in and, a fucking desert. It's and they, terrible. Like, like, look, I'm all for hookers, right? But these, <laughs> these guys, the, the hookers out there are like broken soul people. And it's, it's always like there's be some guy that will be like this. We like people 50 who've traveled from there. And so <laughs> so he'll be like, there was one guy that was a promoter goes, you know, I have a girl that uh, I just uh, let her live in one of my apartments, but one of the dealers, whenever I send a friend over, they get to fuck her. So if you want to fuck her, she, and he's like, did you just say that to me after, you met me an hour ago. You're a fucking cock, man. Yeah, it's like it's like South Africa back during yeah, apartheid. You know, and what I love is women in this country think they got a fucking bed. Hey, go live in fucking Japan or Latin America or fucking the Arab world. You think you got fucking problems? At least in this country. I know. look. I'm all for making women's lives here worse. <laughs> Because I have, I do feel. Did you see how cocky Lalit was when she was talking about her people being raped, like it was a crime? 
The only good thing about Dubai is the water slides. How good are the water slides? Oh, Dubai? fantastic. Man, this place called, <laughs> fuck, the, fuck the rape. Wild water. Well, that, you know what would be, you know be great? Yeah. It would be great as they made the chicks with the spread their legs at the bottom of the water slide. So you were coming down, you just fucking jammed your in, body right in, into her snatch at like in, 90 miles an hour. You want rape? Here's a full body rape. You just slam right into her fucking snatch up to your fucking waist. How's that for rape? You fucking miserable cunt. In, now go in, shave your mustache. In what you think was going to happen? In wild waddies, you will see women in inner tubes <laughs> in still bearing burkas. Burkas in inner tubes. Burkas floating down there. <laughs> Burkas and inner tips. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the best thing about the water slide, you, you don't have to walk up the steps. They have jets that they have jets, shoot They you. shoot you up they the water slide up. and then you and slide you, down. You, 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 one jet will hit you. You'll go like 15 feet. Another jet will catch you and shoot you another one. So you slide up the top. And, but, and it's great. You're <laughs> a little, a little excessive. Your asshole will never be cleaner. It's ever, the ever, greatest. Ever. It's a little, a little fucking excessive. Exactly. You can't going, fucking use the steps on the ladder? No. Fuck. No. I want to go by jet power. <laughs> you fucking retard. No, it's, one, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. You, know, sure. you can just lay there and get lobbed around in, all day. I, I was in Atlantis. They have that thing. It's no, a giant. You slide to the bottom and they push you up to the top. You, just, <laughs> you don't have to get off your tube all day. You just sit on your fucking fuck. tube. I love it. That's fucking great. You, you know, you, your burger gets wet. It doesn't get too heavy. You know what I mean? Well, they have, do they have the wet burger contest at the end of the afternoon about 5 o'clock? <laughs> I, got, I got into a fight. Yeah. By the way, this is the episode that's going to get us killed. I, <laughs> um, if you want a sex burger from Adam and Eve's Toys, <laughs> the yeah. sex burger. It's a sex burger. It's got the ass cut out and the front cut out right where the it's, fucking it's sausage wall is. It's a Muslim woman blow-up doll. They just had too many grimaces from McDonald's left over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love I love the names of those guys though. Think about Grimace. The guy's name is Grimace. He's like Grimace. That's my name. Grimace. Grimace you know? originally used to be. He was meant to be evil. He used to be meant to hang out with the hamburger. Ham and then people just the kids seemed to be quite fond of Grimace, so he came over to Ronald's side. Is that true? It's true. Yeah, Grimace originally. You know they're trying to get rid and of. And he Ronald. asked to change seats in the theater. There's a bunch of fucking. <laughs> there's a bunch of stuck up cunts trying to get rid of. They're trying to I'll get rid. You know they're trying to get rid of Ronald right now? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're well, he's, saying, not, he's not going easy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, he ain't going easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got all these cancer kids in his house. <laughs> yeah. He's, 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 you think you guys got problems with him living here? He's got a whole house full of those fucking I'll kids. I'll tell you what, man. About You can say what you want about McDonald's. I think that Ronald McDonald's house is probably one of the best charities in the world. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, it's one, of, one of the best charities, longest lasting. No, I think that... Now, a lot the of those kids got sick because they ate that food, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the point is... I think the Jim Jeffries charity where we're going to take... Uh, we're going to take paraplegics to get laid is a much better charity. Let me I, tell you something. That's an awesome charity. He did it. He really? Took, he took a quadriplegic to get no, laid. No, he has what I did. Because no. I want a muscular dystrophy to get laid. You, you call, see if you can get And I, I might mention that he has since gone back in the last couple of weeks. So, Dan, if you're listening, I it, hope you enjoyed yourself. It's a, new, it's, a, it's a new contest. See if you can get the quadriplegic hard. You line oh. up a couple hookers and see who can get them, uh, you know. Speaking of the contest, um, <laughs> uh, I got to run in a second, but uh, we we have to we have something going on here. Jim and Jason have challenged each other to. No, uh, you challenged I me. Challenge I never both. challenged. Uh, I don't even want to do this. Jim's gonna do it though. They're both fat you fucks. How much you weigh, Jim? I think I weigh like in my clothes and everything, maybe two fifteen. Jason, I think fully clothed, I'll be like two twenty seven. Two twenty seven. Wow. We're having a contest percentage wise in six weeks so you can lose more weight. Jesus. She's taking, so taking off the watch. No, don't take off no, the watch. Wanna, It'll you help you. You want to keep weight oh, on. Oh, yeah, I want to keep weight on. But uh, wait, what do I win at the end of this? At the end of this, uh, we got to think of something for you. I'm, I'm, at, at the end of it, whoever wins gets a hand job from a girl who's been working out with a shake this, weight. This is the thing. This is, <laughs> should make you look like an anteater. This is the thing. Jason, Jason will weigh a little bit more than me, and I'm, but I'm taller than Jason, so I'm actually thinner than he is now. That's why we're going to do percentage wise. Yeah, we're going to do like. Like if, 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 All right, I'll weigh myself now. Can you uh, get it going? I, I don't even know how to do right, that. So thing. Jim's going to weigh himself. We're going to see what he weighs six weeks from... from Today's weigh-in is brought to you by okay. Nintendo Wii. Why are you giving them a free ad? I'm don't give them shit. They we'll haven't given us any money. We'll cut that out and then maybe we can get... No, we're not cutting anything out. Tonight's we're going to have you in and... Today's weigh-in has been brought to you by Adam and Eve. Exactly. Adam and Eve. Exactly. Adam and Eve. Triple, 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 butt plug. AdamandEve.com, where if you buy porns from us and jerk off to it, you'll lose a lot of weight. Jerking yourself into skinny... All right, so Jim is weighing in. This is this is Jim's fitness too. <laughs> Eddie, you got a lockout on your weight on your character on the Wii. What do you mean? 
What's it say? It, there's a password. You couldn't get in to see what your stats were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the official weight for Jim Jeffries is. Oh, oh he went up. He's overweight by 28.17. Your pounds. weight. Wait, but what's that say? His BMI is at 28.17. Oh, we need to record the, this you're all. Blow, you're, you're it's two, it's two, Jim's two, weight, two, two, Jim weight is 212 and a half. And his BMI is 28.17 listed as overweight i'm gonna be morbidly obese <laughs> oh, yeah. based on All right. BMI. All right. I'm sure so we that. have those how much did you gain <laughs> i'm gonna jump on his and it's gonna add me to his stats oh, <laughs> 10, 10 pounds jim's gained months. 10 pounds in the last six months jason you fat cunt get up there let's see what you weigh all right yeah, i haven't i haven't reached my goals all right. I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get heavier. That was my goal. All right, oh, come on, come on, let's go. Smaller goal, Jim. I should shoot for a smaller goal than gaining ten pounds. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get your weight, then I'm out the door. All right, here we go. Put the next guy on. Here we go. Wow. All right. Oh, twenty nine point six six. And you know, he's, he's, right there. he's flirting with the obese line. Yeah. I think you'll find. Your no, two... My BMI is only like one fucking point more than yours. Yeah, okay. Fine. But they don't know how tall. So talk. I'm like under 220. I'm 223. Dot whatever that is. You're, 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 you're 224. Yeah, and you're at 212. Because I was holding this for you. 212, 224. So I got 12 pounds on you. 12 pounds. That's quite a lot. All right, we done? No, he didn't wrap up. He just took off. All right. We got to okay. do like 10 more minutes. We can, I mean, <laughs> it's all right. We're at 50. It's all right. We can fill it in. All right. So, we, okay, get back on the. Jason, get back on. Jason, Jason, get back on. Yeah. Now, Eddie's had to go off and do the Adam Carolla podcast right now. I'm very interested to see how the, those two will get along. There's going to be a lot of big teeth in that room. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, dental real estate. <laughs> a lot of dental real estate in that room. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so Eddie's over there. Now we're, we're waiting. Uh, Jason's, I'm sitting at 212. You're 212 which, and a half, and he's actually uh, 223 and three quarters, rounded off to 224. 224, right. and I'm 212 and a half. What's the height difference? So what's that? What's the height uh, he's like, what do you I'm 6'1". Like? I'm 5'11". He's 5'11". And some change. Uh, and he's the same he's height 5 on his back, I am 5'11". Apparently. If, I stand, if I do like yoga, I'm almost six feet tall. Like, <laughs> if I do no, yoga. No, I swear to God, if, if, I, I, do if I do yoga, yoga. once, yoga. If, I I like come out of closet, height. if I come out of the closet like a Murphy bed yeah, yeah. and do yoga, I'm 6'2". Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seven foot if I've been jogging. <laughs> so if, uh, so for six weeks, we're going to do the... In six not weeks. for six weeks. Fuck that. I'm not starving myself that's for a, six That's a lot of commitment. Weeks. You might as well get in a relationship. Six weeks. I'll Jesus. Gi I'll give you a month. <laughs> no, but, but Eddie <laughs> said six weeks is actually... Yeah, the, but I'm, I'm having a little holiday in Chicago when I'm doing the comedy festival. I'm having four days off where I'm going to booze up. And it's I'm your choice. Go see. Yeah, it's my choice, but I'm just saying that. Yeah, all right. Well, what, what, what do we win? I don't know. He just put us into this. this I have no Eddie. idea I, what look, he wants. He's just like he's manipulating us. No, you've got to win something. Jim and Eddie need to lose weight. No, you have to win something substantial. There's got to be motivation there. Yeah, exactly. He wants I'm not gonna to just lose 12 pounds just to say I beat some fucking homeless guy. Well, see, the thing is, the thing is, me being I, I gained 10 pounds in the last month, of, uh, last six months, evidently. But I remember that when I was 10 pounds lighter. That was I was working out a lot to get to that level. I actually weighed myself when I thought I was at my lowest, and then when I knew it started building up, I stopped weighing myself. <laughs> so I expected something like about something like eight pounds, but 10 was a bit more than I thought I'd get. Yeah. So two twelve, let's say, yeah, and the clothes were fair, four pounds with the clothes. Do you want to try to the... gain weight? You want to try to see if you can gain the most? <laughs> <laughs> That's a contest. Now that might be something. Yeah. Yeah. Like a four week eating binge. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sort of on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, Either we won't tell Eddie at all. We'll, 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 we'll gain ten pounds. We'll see. Who could, we'll call it the De Niro contest. <laughs> who could put on sixty pounds for a role they're doing? In a, all right, all right. We're gonna play how, Jake Lamada. How about this? How about because Eddie buys all of his food and stuff like that? How about we see if we can make Eddie gain weight? <laughs> <laughs> Start injecting carbs into his chicken. And stuff. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like putting sugar in his beer. No, just put like, 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 like protein powder in his oatmeal. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
have a bulk up. I can't handle his diet anymore, though. It does my fucking head in. What is, what is he What is he? Eat? He only eats grass-fed beef, and he well, believes that he eats a mouthful of other beef, then he's going to die of cancer. Well, he does what's called the paleo diet. Yeah. Which, you know, pre-farming, the paleolithic man, the just hunter-gatherer, all natural foods, nothing that's well, that, processed. Well, or, that's, uh, you know, but uh, fuck it, is it, does that include ice cream? Because I got news no, for you, no. I'm out. No, it's like, <laughs> I think it's also been called the caveman diet. Yeah, you can eat 12 pounds of nuts, berries, and uh, fruit and shit. Yeah, but you can't it. eat cheese with it. I love uh -huh. a bit of cheese. And that's why I'd prefer Atkins over the paleo because at least you get cheese. I'm going to cut out carbs for a month, but I mean. That's all you need. Wait, so we're going to lose weight. eating potatoes, bread, yeah. and. Uh, Drinking beer. Yeah, that's the fucking problem. Like cheese and milk. You, you drop 12 pounds like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vodka. You know what I mean? Yeah. Vodka's good to drink, I guess. Vodka's good to it. drink. Yeah. It's like that. You ever seen that guy on uh, the Bizarre Foods, Andrew Zimmerman? Apparently, the only thing that guy won't eat is pussy. You ever seen that guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little fucking light in the loafers. Is that little right. cake? All right, Jason. No, I'll eat a fucking uh, urchin. Uh, uh, some pussy ass. I'm some. ready to cheat. How about one day a week we convene together and I make chicken burgers? Well, have you heard about the four hour but, body? No, but if we, if we eat the same amount of chicken burgers on the same day, that puts us on an equal playing field, right? Okay, and then we go back. We'll do that. Yeah. Well, they, they, they actually, the they, uh, one of the most popular diets out there right now has a day where you actually do that, where you just eat all the shit you can on one day out of the week. Oh, you know what? There's another popular diet. It's the Atkins. Is the uh, Chet Atkins diet? It's the cigarette <laughs> and liquor. You, know? you, you don't lose any weight, but you fucking write a couple good songs about fucking heartbreak and having your heart ripped out of your ass and fed to you like a cheeseburger. <laughs> I, wow. gained, I gained 11.2 pounds in an hour on my, uh, <laughs> on my wee fit. <laughs> Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. And they said it, they, they think a lot of it's skin. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, you know, you lose a lot of weight. You might, I might have to get a tuck. Wow. <laughs> I was 305 a year ago. I was over 300 pounds. How did you, how did you get down? I started doing the paleo diet with Eddie and doing CrossFits and stuff. Oh, you, oh, you really? Yeah. And when, you gave up on that though, didn't you? <laughs> Hurt my back. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 shit, that shit's a full time job. I did run those stairs in Santa Monica. Did you ever do that? Like those, those oh, I did those stairs. Yeah. They banned that. What's they that? stopped people well, from yeah, going over there. Yeah, because it goes right through people's backyards. It's obnoxious. It became obnoxious. It's, There's it's, just a line of people going up and a line of people, people coming, coming down. down. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, you know, it's uh, believe me, it was a workout and a half. I mean, the next day you're walking like Wait, you, you know, shit yourself. You're not, you're not allowed to do that anymore. No, you're not. But I mean. One day we did, you know what a uh, walking lunge is, right? Yeah, yeah, walking We did 400 lunges. meters of walking lunges. I fell down these stairs the next day. I couldn't even walk. I just like... Yeah. I like going up and down those stairs in Santa Monica. That was like my thing that made me feel like Rocky at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could, I mean, if you could do that like up and down counting one time, if you could do that five times or six times, that was a workout. Yeah, man. that was a workout. I yeah. mean, uh, a friend of mine did it twice and then just, we gave him a wheatgrass shot and then he puked. I, I, my personal trainer made me do it nine times up and back. You have a personal trainer? And uh, at times. <laughs> <laughs> He's part-time. He's part-time, part-time. I'm on the road a lot. You know how it is. I know, man. I've, I, I try to get one in every now and again, and then I try to work out in the hotels, but the motivation is... Yeah, just... it's a shame you can't get in shape by procrastinating. And I get down to the pool and I... Flop around a bit <laughs> in your tube and, and pushes then, you up yeah, the hill. Like, and then I, I start like thinking of things that are exercise that aren't exercise. Like I wank pretty vigorously. <laughs> And I think if I do like you know, take off I'm, a couple ounces, yeah. And then I think if I stand up for that wank, that's got to double that workload. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It try like a different. But if you look, my I honestly because I am a violent wanker. It's never been a tender thing for me. That arm there. <laughs> Right? Yeah. It's fucking, in many ways, cut. Like, there's... It's a definition here. There, there, there's something going on with that. <laughs> now, this arm here... <laughs> it's got nothing. <laughs> it's got nothing. My Did left you really arm. build all that muscle jerking off? I haven't done it through exercise. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's a, that's, like, that's a proper muscle in that arm. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so it's like that cartoon thing where it comes as a U shape and just hanging. <laughs> because he, I remember I went to a doctor and a physical and he actually measured my two arms. And he was like, this arm's way bigger than that arm. And it was a female, I was a female doctor and I was like, yeah, I wank a lot. You know? <laughs> and th <laughs> thinking, thinking there'd be a laugh or something and she just creeped out. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I had to go get She probably got that three times I that to, day. I had to do the, uh, you know, I had to get the test where the, the, the doctor came in and put the fingers in the uh, urethra yeah, yeah, hole. Right. And it was some chick and she's just up there and she's like, come on. Well, you know what I mean? I, 
I was like, it's just uncomfortable. When I, you know, was there a male nurse in the room when no, she no, did that? No, it was just uh, just a woman. But she she was like, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, just, that's a double standard. Could you just take off the class ring? That's all I asked. You know, <laughs> so you went to Yale at sixty seven. Awesome. <laughs> and she's like, she's ripping out license plates and old tires. Like it was like the contents of a shark's stomach. There was like some undigested, you know, stuff in the uh, impacted fecal matter. Exactly. <laughs> it's a fecal family. matter, bro. When you bring it up with the right <laughs> department. Well, so I, apparently Eddie's been, he's trying to coordinate our trainers too, you know, like oh, tell to compete against off. each other. Like your if trainer I, if I versus pay the for, gym if owner. If I pay for my trainer, then my trainer does what I fucking say, not what Eddie fucking tells him. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. No fucking way am I letting Eddie if control my fucking yeah. life. Hey, Eddie. Is, get, isn't it enough when I eat Eddie, in the house, you, he stares at me with like, you eating that? What's wrong with you? You're disgusting. So hey, hey, uh, hey, Jim, we got you a trainer. And the guy shows up with special needs. He's got a helmet on. <laughs> oh, skills, <let's> go. <laughs> skills for living class. <laughs> He's trying to get an edge on you. Eddie, Eddie, buy, Eddie buys his meat at the gym. Have you ever heard of a person who buys their meat at a sporting place? I've seen a porno that was shot in the gym over here once. On it was like if Gru that's nothing like what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even in the same vicinity of what I was saying. He buys his meat at the gym. He buys his meat at the gym because it's grass fed. Because if wow. you eat the corn fed stuff, you're gonna die of cancer. Uh, well, it, I got news for you. Eat chicken, eat anything. It's all got uh, steroids and stuff in it. You were the one that told about that cyst story when you you were no, that, hap that happens with any meat. Yeah, you said that. That, like doesn't, that doesn't matter if it's organic or anything. Just like how we get cysts and things. It, when I used to work as a meat packer in in Australia when I was sixteen, which sounds homoerotic, yeah. And um, <laughs> if if they were cutting into a cow and the knife went into a cyst, and you don't know because it's inside the meat, right? The smell you'd have to evacuate the space for fifteen minutes. The smell was so fucking horrific you couldn't believe it. Now sometimes you can have little cysts, like say in a chicken burger at KFC or something like that, that they they have no way of telling if it's in there. It's just bad luck, and it will make you fucking violently sick. But it's a one in a million shot. But it will happen. Cyst in the chicken meat, you mean? Yeah, or in any type of meat. Yeah, just inside. You can't help it. It's, 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 I, I smell like a fast food chain. Sister filet, you know. It's just, <laughs> Sister filet. Yeah. filet. Sister filet. Come down and get a. a yeah, a, I don't want it with the biscuit. I'm on a diet. <laughs> I'll just have my cyst with some beans. Is that, I think that's enough to wrap the show up, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for listening to the Jim and Jason show. Um, I'd like to thank our guest, Jesse. You got anything you want to say at all, uh, Jim? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. Okay. No, no we, nothing we, going we, on. No shows. No, no websites. No Twitter. On. What's people, up? People can go to Facebook. my Facebook. People can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. It's Jimmy Schubert. Have, have you have you got any big shows coming up? You yeah, actually, I'm gonna be at Flappers and Burbank. I'm going to be at the uh, Show Me Arts and Music Festival in Missouri. Uh, the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and uh, I'll be at Flappers uh, uh, Comedy Club in Burbank on the, the 10th and 11th. And I've never been booked at Flappers. Are they? Is that where's, where's Flappers? Well, it's fucking right in town. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I thought it's, that was like you were making one up. No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the I'm at the Chuckle Hut. I'm at the box with chairs in it. From the no, and I'm also at the Improv down in Fort Lauderdale. If you want to come down and see that show, which is a great gig, you know that. Uh, you, the, the improv I would like to uh, to plug again my gig on the 16th of June at the Chicago Comedy Festival just for laughs. Come along and see me there. And as I said, I'll be throwing the pitch, which I'm very excited about. And Jason would like to plug his hairline. Well, sure, sometime. But actually, uh, since he's gone, I wouldn't mind reminding everybody that Eddie's playing at the Improv in Hollywood in June 11th. Oh, God, someone's trying to lick up someone's No, dude, ass. it's responsible to the <laughs> family. It, like, someone, he's left. Someone's just like, oh, because, uh, I'm Eddie, trying to help out. Eddie's here, and I, I want Is him, that wrong? I want him, his trainer to be nice to me, because... Uh, no, 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 no. All right, so good night, everybody. AdamandEve.com, 50% off. Put the word Jason in. And you'll get all types of things. Keep on rocking in the free world. Talking shit. Talking shit.